Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. I have had my dedicated theater room for about the past 13 years. When I originally built it, it had a 103 inch non-acoustic transparent screen. Well, several years ago, I purchased some Klipsch La Scala's and those speakers were too big for the cabinet that I had and I needed to be able to put that screen or put that speaker behind an acoustic transparent screen. So I reached out to a friend of mine and I said, hey man, how could we kind of fix this? How could we maybe even rebuild a new cabinet and accommodate not only my speakers behind it, but I really want to have easy access to the speakers themselves. And so he came up with a phenomenal concept and idea. And so in this video, I just wanna share with you an answer to a question I get probably every single week, how did you build your screen? What, you know, what do you do to support that? And so in this video, I just wanna give you kind of a behind the scenes look. We'll go back and look at some original footage from the build. And I'll also give you some resources at the end of the video on uh, my build thread so that you can kind of check in on those details in addition to what we talk about in this video. So hopefully this video will be helpful. If you're considering doing a do-it-yourself uh, dedicated screen, maybe even acoustic transparent screen, and you want to figure out a way, how can you get behind that acoustic transparent screen with ease of access? And so let's just go ahead and jump into the video. All right, so here's the front of the cabinet. You can see I have a 150 inch diagonal. It's about 12 feet wide in width. Um, we've got about a four inch velvet border around the outside just for any light spilling over uh, from the image. Um, this screen, actually the fabric was purchased from Seymour. It's the Center Stage XD fabric. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, one of the things that was really important for me was to be able to get behind this screen pretty easily. I didn't want to have to take off the screen, put it up against the wall or take it outside anytime I got new speakers in for review or if I just wanted to change up my setup. So I talked to a friend of mine and he kind of fabricated in his mind what this would look like and how it would come together. So what I want to do is just kind of show you the functionality of it. And then we'll go into details on each individual piece just to kind of give you a better idea of how it's constructed. Now guys, I'm gonna tell you right now, I can't build this. Um, this is not me. Uh, this is definitely a friend of mine, his expertise and his craftsmanship. So there may be some things that you have questions about that I don't have answers to, but I'll be glad to get with him um, to get those to you. So the first thing I wanna share with you is how it is latched. So right now this screen is attached to this front cabinet. So right under here, we'll take a closer look at this. There's a latch and basically it's like a hood latch. It's pretty much the same philosophy. And I've got a, just a piece of wire under here that I grab, pull it to the left and it releases that latch just like that. Alexa, speaker lights on. So then this is just supported by gas shocks. And we can see we've got easy access to my speakers and subwoofers. So I can actually move those around, change them out, climb up in there if I need to, all that type of stuff. But as you can see right here, this is the latch. And so you can see right back here, we've got this little pull strap here. So it's just a little cable just to make it easier. When we first installed it, it was pretty difficult. I couldn't figure out like what I was actually trying to find in there to make the the latch release. And so my buddy said, man, well, I'll just put a piece of wire on there. You just stick your finger through the wire, pull to the left, it'll release that. And that's just attached to this wooden frame right here. So here's a closer look at the latch mechanism. So this is basically, like I said, pretty much similar to what you would find on a car latch, uh, like a hood latch. And so the U-bolt, I'll show you that in just a moment, slides right into here, that locks in place. And then to unlock it, you can see right back here, there's this white metal, uh, basically like just a metal wire. And so we attach that so I can stick my finger through that and pull it out. And you can see that releases right in here. All right, so I also have a spare one of these. He went ahead and bought two just in case for whatever reason this one breaks. So that way we can kind of look at it. You can see there's three bolts here. So those are screwed in to this plate right here. And so you can see this is sitting right here. And then if I flip this kind of around, you'll be able to see right here's where we put 
this white cable. And so that allows me to pull out on that, which releases that latch. So pretty simple. I think literally this thing was like a couple of bucks. So works perfect. Definitely like the way it secures the uh, screen to this wooden frame right here. And if we take a look at the front of the screen, here's the little U-bolt that when the screen closes, it latches right there to the locking mechanism. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the part that I get asked the most about. How do these mount and how do I use these? So as you can see, the right side of the screen uses basically very similar to what you would have on say the trunk of your car. And so it's just a gas shock. And so for those of you that are do-it-yourselfers, just kind of let you see a close-up of how that's attached. Now over the past two years, the gas shocks have kind of lost a little bit of their uh, functionality, so they sag a little bit. So I'll probably need to reorder some new ones here. But basically, that supports the entire weight of the frame. So here we are on the left side of the frame and it attaches the exact same way. So next thing I wanna show you is the actual frame itself. This frame, as you can see, was really expensive, 12 bucks. Here's another one, $12. So we bought three pieces of extruded aluminum. Now on the other side of this, it actually has a groove that allows us to put the screen and attach it to using spline and a spline tool. So it's basically similar to how you would attach a uh, screened in, um, like to a lanai or something. You can see here is just a little angle bracket. And these bolts right here are what hold the wooden frame on the front of it. So that just gives you an idea maybe of how that's constructed. So we basically bought three pieces of extruded aluminum that were 12 feet wide for 12 bucks a piece. So we got 36 bucks in the actual frame itself. So my friend took one of those 12 foot pieces and cut it to make the height of the screen and used each piece of that for the left and the right side. Now in these photos, you can see how we took each one of the extruded piece of aluminum and welded those together, really just kind of in a, a makeshift fashion. It's not done with a, a welding rod. It's done actually with a butane tank. And here you can see just the base of the frame that's just made of two by fours. And then you've got a two by four right here. It goes all the way up. And a couple of them are attached right there. And to close the screen, all I have to do is just lower it. And then once it touches, I just give it a slight push and you'll hear it locks into place. All right, so the lighting's gonna be pretty bad in this, but I had to brighten this up so that you could actually see it a little bit better. So here you can see, this is a, literally a piece of wood that's on the front and it's beveled here. And so we wrapped this velvet around the wood. And then from the backside, we were able to actually, remember those screws I showed you earlier? Those screws are what attach this piece of wood to the front of this frame. So now I wanna show you a couple of clips from the actual build from two years ago. Now pardon the quality of the video and definitely the audio quality is terrible. I did not have a microphone. I didn't have lighting or anything. But again, I think it'll be beneficial if you're considering doing something like this so you can kind of see how we've constructed it and how it was kind of put together. I'll also post a link to the original videos down in the description below so you can watch them in their entirety if you wish. So we'll slide this back in. Another thing I'm really pretty pumped about. Now this may be a little weird just because I've got rope lighting, so it may fall. Trying not to pinch the rope lighting. So this whole screen, I'm just gonna lay the rope lighting down. whole screen 
lifts up. Supported by gas shocks here, one on each side. So we've still got to install the screen. The screen's gonna be 150 inches, um, acoustically transparent. We have installed at least the majority of the screen. You can see the Seymour XD screen here. Honestly, this was a big pain. We basically have a, a groove here that we put spline in. As you can see, this fabric is pretty stinking tight. We actually angled it. So you can see this is the angle here. I believe it ended up being about a 15 degree angle. They suggest rotating the screen up to 20 degrees to help prevent moray. And so then we're gonna trim that piece all the way around. And then we're gonna add our masking over that. It's about a three and a half inch, I believe, two and a half, three and a half inches of velvet. So that'll cover that. That's part of the frame back here. So our masking will actually screw into the frame mount right over this and probably come out about that far the only problem we've got is one spot right here in the corner it has a little bubble so we're gonna have to pull this down tighten the fabric um, but this was honestly a huge huge pain it took several hours just to get to this point um, basically we've got this little spline tool and so we would push in the fabric into the, the groove here because we found even just with doing this it wouldn't push it in there so we actually had to kind of tuck it in there first then run the spline and even just putting the spline in there is absolutely ridiculously hard um, probably because the spline is slightly too big but the good thing is this fabric is not coming out at all so um, I think it's gonna work out really really great the screen looks beautiful oh my goodness um, so we're sitting here this is my primary viewing position. So my screen is actually about nine feet from my eyes. Some people are gonna say, well, man, that's way, way, way too big for that close. Um, I don't think so. I think it's gonna be incredible. <laughs> um, I think it's gonna be fully immersive. My 103 inch screen never was immersive. Um, that will be immersive even from the back row. So I'm pretty pumped about that. Now recently, one of my subscribers reached out to me and shared some photos of his setup and how he did a very similar style flip up screen with his. So take a look at these photos and kind of get some more ideas on how you might be able to incorporate something like a flip up screen in your home theater setup if that's what you're wanting to do. Now I'll leave links down in the description below to my website. You can go to youthmanreviews.com and click on my about page. On the about page, if you scroll down a little ways, you'll actually see all of the links to my build thread. There's additional videos there that you can watch that link back to YouTube. And so definitely, if you're interested in kind of how all this fit together and you want to watch those videos in the entirety, be sure to check those down in the description below. I hope this video has been helpful as well as inspirational for you and your home theater. And as always, you guys be blessed. We'll catch you in the next video.